Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. I'm especially excited to have Dave D. I am a huge fan of magicians uh, <laughs> and marketers, uh, which we have both. Uh, today we have Dave D. who is one of the top direct response marketers. He helps run Glazer Kenny Inner Circle, known as GKIC. And that is the top echelon. If you don't know what it is, the top echelon of marketing. Dave runs the marketing there. Uh, Dave started a small chain of magic shops in karate school before pursuing his dream of being a professional magician. And after applying direct response marketing, of course, Dave went from going three shows a month to averaging over 25 shows a month in less than 90 days. And of course, people want to know, what are you doing? They want to pick his brain. So now over 16 years, he's been teaching these same methods to tens of thousands of entrepreneurs. Dave, thanks for joining me. Hey, man, I'm super happy to be here and uh, really excited about this. Me too. I want to help out the people. We're going to give massive value. As I told you in, in the in the pre-call here, I want this to be the best yeah, one. So yeah, I love that. Let's do it. You know, when I ask, what do you want to share? Where do you want to point people? You're like, I don't care. I just want to give value. And that's the best. Um, and I always like to start with a fun fact before I want to find out where you came from, where you got your marketing chops and everything like that. But the fun fact about you is you're a professional magician. So where'd that come from? How did you decide to pursue that? Yeah. So I had a, the story's actually instructive. I had a, my grandmother when I was eight years old gave me a little magic set, a little royal magic set. Like mm -hmm. a lot of kids, you probably got a little magic set, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... When I got it, something lit up in me, something turned on in me. And literally, I knew Jeremy from that point that I wanted to be a professional magician. It wasn't like a kid's thing. It was deep inside. Really? Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And my parents thought it was kind of cute, right? When I was 8, 9, 10. But when I got to be 16, 17, 18, they didn't think it was very cute. And so they would say, you know, because they loved me and they had no reference um, they would say things like, well, you can't do that. It's not practical. You're not going to make any money at it. Right. Um, you know, you got to get a real job, all that kind of stuff that I probably every entrepreneur, unless they came from an entrepreneurial family who's listening to this, had had the same experience. And so I believed that for a really, really long time. And I went to UMass, I graduated, got in radio advertising sales and I got into the magic shops and all of that kind of stuff, the karate school. And that was a disaster, by the way. The karate, the karate school? school? Why? Yeah. Well, okay, so here's the situation. I was working at a company called Magic Masters in Atlanta. And they were, quote, executive magic stores. Basically, what we did is we sold overpriced magic tricks to unsuspecting conventioneers. Okay. okay? <laughs> That's what we did. So we pitched magic tricks, not to magicians, but to other people. I got fired from that job, which was the best day of my life because the owner found out that I really had these entrepreneurial tendencies and that I really wanted to open my own. So I opened up the karate school at Christmas time in, in the mall and uh, why karate? And, uh, the karate way. school, not the karate school, the magic oh, shop. Oh, magic. And, okay. Right. Was pretty successful at it. So now I think, dude, I am an entrepreneurial genius. Right. This entrepreneurial stuff is easy, and so instead of opening up like you know another shop or keeping that one and building that one up. No, I'm an entrepreneurial genius, so I decide to buy a karate school. And I figure I'm fully qualified to do that because, My hey, listen, I've school. been doing six months of karate, oh, so okay. I'm fully qualified to buy a karate school. That's and random. It was a Did it just come across your desk, or why a karate school? Um, I, I was training in karate. Um, I got up to be an advanced black belt, uh, excuse me, an advanced good. brown belt in karate, and uh, the chain of schools had another one for sale, and so I decided I, I wanted to buy it. It was a disaster. We found out that the place was... Twenty six thousand dollars in debt. Wow. Uh, they sold all the paper, meaning they sold all of the contracts right before we took over the school. So we had to service the students, but we weren't getting any uh, uh, money. Yeah, back they already from... took all the money. Or... Yeah, and I knew nothing about marketing. You see, I was under the belief that if I just offered a really good product or service, I would be successful, right? Because that's what that's what we were taught. Fortunately, I got out of that, but. What happened was I went to go to this the success seminar, one of those big success motivational rally seminars. Mm -hmm. They used to be run by Peter Lowe. And the last guy in the program is this guy by the name of Dan Kennedy. And I had never heard of Dan Kennedy before, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, ah. Now, I'm getting up to leave, and Dan says, don't leave. I mean, he's not saying <laughs> the person. Right, says, don't yeah. leave. You're just he's stuck in the Atlanta traffic. So I sit down, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. So I start taking notes like crazy. And I get that same feeling that I got when I was got that magic kit. Oh, right. this is it. 
Yeah. This is the deal. This ma this marketing thing is the key. And long story, I won't get into it, but I, en I actually en eventually ended up buying magnetic marketing. And I applied yeah. magnetic marketing. Yeah. And because I was at the point of, like, I was $80,000 in debt, by the way. Wow. All right. Wow. From like, my the wife was working two jobs. Yeah. My wife was working two jobs. I wasn't making any money. And it was at that point I had to make a decision. Was I really going to live my dream finally? You know, have the balls to do it? Or was I going to get a real job, which really would mean death to me? Right. right. I mean, I just couldn't do it. What made you go to that seminar? Who, like, who attracted you originally? Because you didn't know Dan direct, Kennedy. It was a direct mail piece that came. Yeah direct mail piece that came to the karate school and uh, what made me stay was dan saying hey sit down you're gonna get caught in atlanta traffic but when magnetic marketing arrived i literally this is no joke i remember it it was on a friday i locked myself in a spare bedroom in an apartment that i was living in and i not kidding jeremy i went through the entire program Friday, Saturday, Sunday, almost no sleep. I mean, I listened to every audio tape. There were audio tapes back then. Read the entire yeah. thing. Went through all the bonus. Did everything. Because I had to make this work, right? right? On Monday, I started implementing. And, I mean, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. I just did it. Yeah, and so what did you do this, first? Because your back's against the wall at this point. I bought a roll of stamps. Okay. Uh, honest to God, that's where I was. Uh, that's what I could afford. I bought a roll of stamps. And I know I, I, I copied letters and I stuffed them into envelopes and I sent them out and that's what I did. And then I placed a little tiny lead generation ad and I just followed all of the stuff. And I think this is one of the, the, the big things that, uh, that people make a mistake is that they think, well, my business is different, right? My business is different. So there was nothing in magnetic marketing that's, oh, this is for magicians. There was nothing in magnetic marketing that said, this is for entertainers even. Right. But marketing is marketing is marketing. It's it's mm -hmm. all the same, yeah. right? I had to generate leads. I had to convert those leads into customers and clients. I had to deliver. I had to get referrals. I, I had to do all of the same stuff any business has. It's not right. just no different. Just yeah. a different business. It's the same but fundamentals, yeah. Same, yeah. And so I implemented everything, and my business exploded. I did like three shows to twenty-five shows in three months. In my fourth month, I did fifty-seven shows. I don't even know how you do that many shows. That's crazy. It was well, obviously more than one a day. Yeah, I, I was I was going crazy. I mean, I was like uh, on the weekend I would be do I did up to five shows, and it was amazing. And then Dan suggested to me. He said, "Well, what you should do is take the ideas that how you translated magnetic marketing, and package it and sell it to other entertainers to get into this business called the information marketing business." And mm -hmm. I'm like, "What the heck is the information marketing business?" And he says, "Well, I got a course." on that <laughs> the course for everything of course he did right so i so I were you at this point and tell me what it looked like with magnetic marketing were you going to the seminars or were you were you on the phone with at that time with dan or any of the people there or what what so, did the I relationship with magnetic like? marketing and i just applied it that's what i did i wrote really lousy copy um but i got something done yeah. <laughs> i got a lot done yeah right and uh, the mistake that people make when trying to become successful is they try to do things in a linear fashion. I'm going to do this and this and this. No, 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 no. You do all of it. Yeah. Do yeah. all of it. If, yeah. And a whole bunch of it didn't work. But guess what? A whole bunch of it did work. Right. And What was and working and what was not then, working? So the bottom the line is, to conclude the story, yeah. is at the end of the year, I had paid off all of my debt in one year. It's amazing. All yeah. of my debt. Debt free. Um had made uh had bought a new house had bought a new car everything changed for me and so i was hooked on hey this direct response marketing this copywriting um this stuff really works and this stuff can really change your life that's why i'm so passionate about teaching it yeah. today because I, I i know from personal experience it works and nobody can say that their business was different than the business i was in mm -hmm. right so there is no business that's you would say mm -hmm. weirder than being yeah. a magician right. or a mentalist, as right. I really want. If you could, yeah, if you can make it work for being a magician, <laughs> you can make it work for anything. I mean, yeah. anyone should, I encourage anyone to watch your videos on YouTube, and one thing you do express over and over is implementation, fast implementation. You say that over and over, and that's really key. What was working at that time, and what wasn't working? Because obviously you go, I was writing bad copy, but it was working. Yeah, right. it wasn't. It wasn't horrible copy. Yeah, it wasn't horrible copy because here's the thing: my competitors wouldn't do any of it. Yeah, right. So uh, 
I, I started out, I, the market that I picked to start with, it's not the market I ended up with, but to start with was children's birthday parties because it was the easiest and fastest and least expensive to get into. Mm -hmm. So at that time, there was different parenting magazines around here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? There was other magicians out. I was the only one that had a damn headline. Right? I was the only one Do that had a remember what it was? headline. Yeah. Everyone else had Joe Blow, magician. Right? And so... The beauty is that you don't have to be spectacularly good because everyone else is really, really bad uh, in your market. So uh, lead generation worked fantastic for me. Uh, lead generation uh, direct mail, which, by the way, still works, still works great. And so many people are into the Internet and I'm into the Internet. But boy, I got to tell you, direct mail still kills. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, then um, lead generation display ads worked really well. What did not work was cold calling. I hated cold calling. It was it no was one likes cold calling. Yeah. Oh, it was it was it was a miserable experience. And the positioning is all wrong. Everything is all wrong with it. And so I really, you know, did a ton of lead generation. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that I did is I couldn't afford a demo video. So when I started getting into the corporate work, I didn't have a demo video. Mm. So I changed the positioning. So, and a lot of marketing is changing the positioning in the mind of your prospect, right? So th they would say, hey, can you send me a demo video? And I'd say, no, I don't want to, I don't send a demo video because anyone can look good on a demo video. Let me come before your board of directors and show you what I do. Very smart, now, yeah. The real reason I did it was I didn't have a demo video <laughs> and I couldn't afford a demo Sounds video. Sounds good though. Sounds good, Well, right? that's a, you're so, right though, because when you see a video, you're like, are they doctoring that? Are they stopping it? If you're in person, you see it right in front of you. Well, you can't close the sale in person. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was going up against people who had way more experience than me, yeah. way better promotional package. But if the guy is there and you do a decent job, so I think a lot of people need to get back to that. This one-on-one -on -one yeah. type of selling is yeah. important, yeah. really important. Everyone wants to automate everything and up to a point that that's good. But when I started doing consulting and started doing done for you like webinars and teleseminars for people as my business progressed, I still sold those over the phone through a lead generation process. So I basically followed the same process was getting someone to call me, to, to be attracted to me, yeah. and then changing the positioning so that they were kind of asking to work with me. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't selling them, they were selling me on why I should work with them. Mm -hmm. So that change in positioning is, is, is huge. Yeah. Yeah, and Dave, I want to see the progression and the info, but I want to go back to the, the magic because I think it's interesting. I want to hear about, one, what was your go-to, when you're in front of the, the board, what's your go-to trick? Your go-to <laughs> trick, and I want to hear about when you transitioned from the kids' parties to the corporate, how did that change your benefit-driven headline and what changed in your copy? Yeah, it's a great question because, it's it, again, it doesn't just apply to magicians. It applies to anybody who wants to get into a new market. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So my, my go-to, quote, trick was something called – I don't want to uh, offend you with a trick. Like, what do you call it? No, no, no. It, oh, okay. it, it's fine. I mean, I wish I if, – if I knew you were going to ask this question, oh. I'd have a prop here to show you. Um, but it was called Rocky Raccoon. Okay. And – it was a, it's a spring raccoon that I literally don't made. give away the trick by the way. I, you know, no, I no, don't no, want, no, okay. a spring raccoon okay. that it really looks like it comes to life. And I had it read somebody's mind. I had it read the president's mind. So stare deep into the raccoon's eyes, and the raccoon would whisper. To me. <laughs> I would then tell the president of the company or the CEO what they were thinking. So it was funny and mind blowing at, at the same time. Um, but interesting, the only time I went to. Interesting, embarrassing. The only time I went to uh, do one of these live presentations that I did not close was when they didn't set me up at all. They didn't say why I was there. And I thought that they did. So there's a board of directors, <laughs> the board of directors. I pull out a freaking raccoon, dude. And they're like looking at Security. me like, have, like, like get them like out of here. Like I have three heads. Yeah. So. To answer your, your your second question is transitioning to the market is I have to create everything new, right? And this is a, a big mistake that people make when marketing their businesses. They try to appeal to too many different groups. You yeah. want to narrow your focus, especially today. Yeah. People want a specialist. They want a person that is, I mean, just look at cable TV channels. Look at the food networks. I mean, there's subcategories of the food network, right? Right. So there's there's so the sports, barber, yeah, 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 golf right. channel, and yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And so that's what people want. And and a, a lot of magicians, a lot of business people, like for example, the typical magician's business card would say on it, 
birthday parties, trade shows, corporate events, right? Yeah. Well, nobody believes that you're great at all of that stuff. So you need to, your marketing, when you're writing your copy, needs to appeal to someone specific. Yeah. Right? Now, you can have different markets that you go after. So I didn't just say, okay, I'm going to stop doing birthday parties while I get into the corporate market. Yeah. I just created separate marketing materials with my ideal prospect in mind. So my ideal prospect was the human resource director. Yeah. So I created lead generation magnets for the human resource director. Seven questions to ask any entertainer before you hire them. Yeah. All right. And different reports. And everything was targeted to what this person yeah. wanted. Another key point here, and there's an exercise I want to take everybody through. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's really good for this, but let me just, we can get back to that. We can get back to the exercise, but I want to make sure everyone goes through it. Yeah. Um, one of the, 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 the key points to all of this is you've got to have what we call that message to market match, and you have to know who your prospect is. Right. And when selling the business to business, that's first of all, it's a misnomer. You're never selling to a business, you're selling to an individual or individuals in that business right. that have their own self-interest, all right? Yeah. They have their own agenda, their own, in addition to the businesses that they work for agenda, they have their own personal agenda there. So for the meeting planner or the human resource director, whichever it is, when they do an event, that's their big thing. When they do a meeting, that's their big thing. They've got to shine, so this is a big deal to them. And They're they, on the line, their job's on the line, so to speak. Yeah, right. So they want to look good. So most people, when they were marketing, they say, well, I, I'm going to make your event unforgettable. Your audience is going to love it. I did all of that, but I also talked about their benefit. What was going to happen? The president of the company will be coming up to them and thanking them, right? So I was talking to their their, their what would appeal to them, right. what really mattered to them. Right. I touched upon the points of what kept them awake at night, staring at the ceiling, unable to yeah. fall asleep. These are all questions that you need to answer before you start writing any copy. Yeah. Before you write any copy, you need to answer these questions. Right. Can I give you can I give you some things that they need to answer? Well, first, I don't, okay. you mean the exercise? Yeah, well, about? this leads into the exercise. Okay, yeah. I I also want to know how you figured out how the human resources person was the target and also what did you find that was keeping them up at night? Sure. So what keeps them up at night is a bad event or a bad enter. So in my case, it was a bad entertainer, someone who would uh, not be clean, all right? So they'd have a magician I or a comedian there and they wouldn't have clean comedy, okay? Uh, that was a really big one. In fact, uh, another guy, another entertainer, a guy by the name of Adam Christing, actually created a whole company called Clean Comedians, hmm. all right, to address this really important point. So that, that was one of the things, entertainer not showing up on time the entertainer being bad, all of that kind of stuff, the people of offending the audience, the audience being bored, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I think so, for anyone out there, like you said, you're. it's really important to know who you're selling to that individual, and you figured out that human resources person was that person. Right, you. unless the company had a meeting planner. So if the company had a meeting planner, it was... The meeting planner, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of companies didn't have a meeting planner. They had a human resource director. Yeah. All right. So some questions you need to answer before you create any of your marketing. Yeah. Um, first one is what keeps them awake at night, staring at the ceiling, unable to fall asleep as it relates to the product or service that you're selling. Yeah. Doesn't matter what product or service you're selling. They're worried about something. All right. Yeah. Uh, car sales. They're worried about not having a, a nice car. All right. Uh, being looked down upon about their neighbors, so on and so forth, all that, okay? So that, that's one one really big question. Another really big question, and um, most marketers and most copywriters don't go deep enough, okay? They do only surface level stuff. So a big question is, what do they secretly, privately desire most? Hmm. What do they secretly, privately desire most? Yeah. Let me give you an example of exactly what I'm talking about. If I was to ask you, a magician who's buying a marketing course, okay, what do they what do they want? Well, everyone would answer they want to book more magic shows. They they want to make more money. Okay, that's what they want. Yes, and you've got to address that. But that's surface. That's surface level. Okay, you to to create powerful marketing, you need to go deeper, way deeper into their psychology. And so one of the things that 
the magician that that it was an undercurrent in all of the marketing that I did was this. What the magician secretly, privately desired most was to show all those people who said it wasn't practical, that they wouldn't make any money, mm. they couldn't do it, that they'd have to get a regular job, that they were wrong. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so when magicians read my sales read my sales letters, they would literally comment and say it was almost like you were under my kitchen table listening to me talk to my wife. Mm. That's the kind of connection that you need to make. And if you don't have a narrow enough target market, you can't make that connection. Right. If you're talking to everybody, you can't make that connection. All right? Yeah. The next question comes from my buddy Frank Kern. And it's, it ties in beautifully with this. And, the, and it's not really a question. It's finishing this sentence. The prospect is saying to you, if I could just blank, if I could just, what is it that they're saying after that? And the key word there is just, if I could just do this. So if we go to the magician's example, we'll stick with that. Um, the, the magician isn't saying, if I could just be David Copperfield and make $40 million a year. I <laughs> right, yeah. Now, he may have that dream. That may be right. something that he wants, but that's he, that's not the main thing. And right. if I try to pitch that, it's not going to happen. Right. Because first of all, I'm not David Copperfield who's making $40 million a year. There's one guy, all right? But he, what this guy is saying, if I could just make enough money performing magic so I could quit my lousy job. That's what he's saying, all right? Same thing with internet marketers. So people who sell how to make money on the internet. Well, they're not just saying, if I could make, just make $2 million a year like Frank Kern makes. They're not saying that. They're right. saying, if I could just make enough money to quit my lousy job. Right. Right? And if you don't get that right and you don't know that, then your your marketing is going to fall flat. Your message is not going to be as strong as it as as it could be. So you want to answer all yeah. of these questions. And again, you got to do the demographic information. You need to know all of that. Okay, but that's one on one stuff. All right, those questions go way deeper than that. Now here's the exercise. And I now when, at a boot camp when I do my boot camps for GKIC, which are free to our members. We go, this is like an hour setup. I really go deep into these yeah. and answer all these questions. Yeah, right? these are intense things. I mean, to figure out your secret desires, if you don't already know them, to tap into that is not an easy thing necessarily. It's not an easy thing. And people always ask, well, how do I find that out? Well, first of all, if you've been in the business for a long enough time in, in your niche, you kind of know what it is. If you don't know what it is, you need to find out. Okay. And one of the ways to find out is it's easier than ever before. I mean, so the way we used to teach it is buy all of the trade magazines for that particular industry and read the trade magazines, and you'll see reoccurring stories come up and things that are people questions that people are asking the editor and, and things like that, and you'll absolutely discover what it is. Uh, today, it's even easier than that. Not that you shouldn't do that, but there's discussion boards. Okay? Forums, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, for everything. So there's a magic discussion board. It's called the Magic Cafe. If you go to the Magic Cafe, by the way, the Magic Cafe is broken apart into little subset groups from guys who just want to do card tricks to guys who just want to do rope tricks. It's a really exciting forum, the guys that just want to do the rope tricks, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to mentalists like me. And if you go and read those, absolutely. And if you read through a bunch of them, you would absolutely see a common theme of what they secretly, privately desire most. I thought you were going to say you have to call someone's wife or husband and, and ask them what the other person is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you can survey your – but again, a lot of it can be intuitive too. But Now, if you're in the market, if you were one of them, that's the best because you already know. I mean, I already knew because yeah. I was one of them. Yeah. I already knew. Okay, so here's the exercise. And again, we do it at the boot camp. I force the members to do this. Yeah. All right. I can't force anybody to do it, but I strongly encourage You're a mentalist. You can subliminally force anyone. I can subliminally. I have been doing it with all my hand gestures. <laughs> but just to be doing exactly what we say, Jeremy. So here, here's the exercise. It is different than any exercise you've ever done before. Okay, I want you to write a letter, but it's not a sales letter. I call this the Stanislavski method of marketing. Okay. So Stanislavski, for people who don't know, was a very, very famous uh, German acting coach. And he came up with something called the method. And th there are method actors. And method actors include like Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. These are folks that are, they, they actually become the character. Yeah, yeah. They actually become the character. They don't act it. They become the character. And it's very, very intense. And it takes them, if, 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 remember the movie Lincoln? 
the Steven Spielberg put out. Yep. Well, Daniel Day Lewis is a is a method actor, and Spielberg believes in the method. And so, even during breaks, when they weren't filming, he had the cast and crew refer to Daniel Day Lewis as Mr. President. Hmm. Okay. Powerful. So yes. that's what we're talking about. You you become. So yeah. you're going to write a letter, but you're not going to write a sales letter. You're going to become your prospect. Hmm. You're going to be thinking about what they what that keeps them awake at night, what they fear, what they desire, all of that stuff, all answering all of those questions. And you're going to have them write you a letter asking you for their help. Right. Yeah. So like they're writing a personal letter telling you specifically what they want, what they need, what they fear, who they are. And when you do this, everything changes for you. Everything changes for you because you go deeper and you become your prospect. Yeah. Now, whenever you write an email, whenever you create a blog post, whenever it is, you go back into that. You can read that letter, become that person, and now I can write to them with compassion and empathy and power and speak directly to what they desire way more than if I'm just following a, uh, a template or a copywriting formula. Those are fine. I use those. But when you add this dimension to it, yeah. it changes everything. I encourage everybody to do it because you'll learn so much more about who your prospect is and what they want. And you'll be able to speak to them because you'll be able to feel them. Jim Rohn had a wonderful saying. Jim Rohn, uh, for people who don't know who Jim Rohn was, he was Tony Robbins' mentor and one of my, actually my favorite motivational um, guy. He said, you got to meet people where they are in order to lead them where you want them to go. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is in pain, you got to meet them in that pain and then lead them. But you can't meet them in that pain unless you feel it and you really understand them. Yeah. No, Dave, that makes thanks, sense? Yeah, Dave, th that's really powerful. Thanks for sharing that. Everyone should pause and just write, start writing, start, you know, write the letter. And, and you know, you probably have to modify it a few times or think through it. It's yeah, probably absolutely. not an easy thing to do in like five minutes, but you just get started. Right. Okay. I'm, I'll give you one other huge one that yeah. I, we do at the boot camp. Yeah. Okay. And it's kind of tricky, um, but if, if, if you write it, um, so I teach something called psychic sales. It's like one of the yeah. things I'm not. Yeah. Psychic. I've seen your, yeah. Your site is psychic sales. Yeah. 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 Um, and so I, I say the difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. The okay. difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. So if you're, if you're using these strategies to manipulate somebody to buy a product or service that they don't need, that they don't want, that truly doesn't help them, then you're a con artist. Okay. But if you have a product or service that really, truly helps somebody and really makes a positive impact on their life in any way. And it's the perfect prospect for you. Then I believe you've got a moral obligation to use any strategy that you can to make that sale. Yeah. Um, that's 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 morally right. Yeah. So here's the strategy that people can take. It's a little controversial, but here's what you can do. So after you write this letter out, you give it to somebody, and you have them mail it to you. You can't mail it to yourself. You have somebody mail this letter to you. Um, Gary Halbert, the late great copywriter Gary Halbert, talked about this not in this context, but he had everybody write a sales letter, address it, and then send it to themselves, okay, to see how it felt to get the letter. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is where I got this idea from. So, so now you have somebody send you that letter, so somebody who's other than you send you the letter, all right? So now you legitimately have had someone send you that letter. Mm -hmm. So you get in front of your webcam with the envelope and the letter, and you take out and you say, the other day I received this letter in the mail, and I want to read it to you. And you take out that letter and you read it with all sincerity to the camera. Yeah. And then you say, you fold up the letter, put it back in, you look straight at the camera and you say, this is precisely why I do what I do is to help people just like this. Yeah. You want to talk about a video that will get so much response. It's insane. It's insane because... If you target it right, if you're a lead generator, if the people who are coming to your site are the right people, that message is gonna, they're gonna say, oh my God, this guy really understands me. This is me, he was just talking to me. Love that, yeah, yeah. that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. I love it. Um, so what was the next, so you went from the, the shows and you were mm -hmm. just book solid. Yeah. 
Um, what was the next big milestone for you? Well, it's funny. I, I like to, uh, you know, what I say at seminars is I ask the audience, how many people have ever been to a child's birthday party? Everyone raises their hand. I say, how would you like to go to 57 of them in one month? <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that I really wasn't living the dream that I thought I was. And that's, that's when funny. I got into corporate, yeah. which was more money and really more of my style. Yeah. Uh, but the next milestone was starting the information marketing business. Um, for magicians. So taking my knowledge right. and again, using all of the copywriting techniques that I learned, I bought copywriting courses and I studied, I wrote out everything that they told me, like the old school, right? Who Get good sales letters, write them up by hand, baby. Yeah. I did all of that, right? Um, sometimes I think that people get too smart, right? And I got to catch myself the sticks. I've been doing this for so long. Well, I already know that. Okay. But, yeah, but you know it, but are you doing it? Right, right. <laughs> Right? Oh, I already know that. I don't. I can't learn from this person because, well, yeah, you can. Back then, I was not smart, and so I had to. But maybe I was actually smarter, right? <laughs> right? Because I did what right. masters told me to do. Yeah. Right. And so I created a, a a tiny little. And this is the way to do this, by the way. I created a the first step. Everyone says, "Okay, I'm going to create a product to sell." No, no, that's completely the wrong thing to do. The first thing I did was I created a little lead generation ad. It was $65 to place it in Magic Magazine. Now, there's trade magazines just for magicians, right. okay? So I placed a $65 ad in a trade magazine, which basically had the headline something about how to make $100,000 a year as a magician. Because to a magician, most magicians, well, most people, by the way, aren't making $100,000 right. a year, all right? So for a magician, that's huge, right? And call to get this free report. And I had a total free recorded message. And that's all I did. So place that in the Magic Magazine. It, the, the ad runs. And I start getting calls on the total free recorded message from other magicians asking for this free report. I am stunned by this. Right? I am stunned by this. By the way, it's the same model that I followed to book the Magic Shows. I place lead generation ads. Same exact model. Business is business, marketing is marketing. Right. So now though, I had to write the free report, right? Now free report is a really a disguised sales letter. And, and back then it really was a disguised sales letter. It's kind of shifted a little bit today where you, you've got to be giving out some really decent content. Right. But even then I did, but here's the key. You want to tell them what to do, not how to do it. You want to tell them what to do, not how to do it, or give them um, valuable but incomplete information. So there are 10 things that you need to do. I don't have time to go over all 10 of them. I'm going to do three of them. Okay, right. right. Yeah, so I wrote this report on a typewriter, not a computer. A typewriter. A type right. And I was so excited because it was one of those typewriters that had a little bit of memory. Do you remember those? Maybe you know. They like had a little bit of memory. So you could press up and it was like, like four lines would type. Out <laughs> so I bang out this, this, this sales letter, all right? Yeah. And I modeled. Guess what I modeled? I modeled the magnetic marketing sales letter. Okay. Prove it. It works. Yeah. I did copy it, by the way. There's a huge difference between copying and modeling. Huge difference. A lot of people mess that up. I didn't copy it. I modeled it. And I had permission from the creator. So bang that out. The thing was a nightmare, though. I mean, it was full of typos. It was, I'm like the king of typos. So <laughs> anyway, though, again, this goes back to my let's just take action. Right. I printed, I went out to mailboxes, et cetera. It wasn't Kinko's. That was mailbox, et cetera. Made copies put them in the envelope myself, hand address them, dump them in. Okay, boom. Now, I sent out the letters, these sales letters, right? Like a few days later, I get a call. Now, I had my home number there because I didn't have anything set up. Guy says, hey, I got your letter. I want to order your product. I'm like, holy, this is amazing, right? This is incredible. And so I tell the guy, his name was Jeff Haas. I still remember his name. I got something, uh, a, a cool ending to this. But Jeff Haas, I say, Jeff, listen, um, I'm just putting the finishing touches on the course, right? <laughs> and so I won't process your credit card until I'm ready to ship it out. It should be ready to ship out in three weeks. Well, number one, I didn't have the course, okay? And number two, I had no way to process his credit card because I didn't have a merchant account, all right? It's called the lead so now, startup. And another yeah. order came in. Another order came in, then another order came in. And so now I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to create this information marketing course. Boom, 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 back on the typewriter. All right, so I create this. Um, I, most of it was examples of marketing that I was already doing. So to say I didn't have any, I didn't, I had a You'd whole You'd already bunch done of it, you just didn't package it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so bang, bang, bang on the typewriter, 
this thing again is a disaster. But I say, I say to myself, well, listen, the sales letter was a disaster. We might as well remain consistent with all the tech. <laughs> And I promised them four uh, audio cassettes. And so I recorded the four audio cassettes on my home stereo system and duplicated them with four different boom boxes. Oh, I would love around. to see a picture of that. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was it was something. And packaging you know, and I'm trying to put the labels on myself and so they're creased and <laughs> yeah, everything. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So so then I I I, 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 I send it out and uh, people actually really liked it. And then I started doing seminars and really blew it up into a complete information marketing business with that core product, uh, the Ultimate Insider Secret Marketing Program for Magician, as the lead in product. And that's it. What's really neat is I was speaking at a, this was a number of years ago, at uh, Ken McCarthy's The System Seminar. Yeah, yeah. Probably the best internet marketing yeah, I seminar. just met Ken like at the uh, the Titans event. I oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant guy. Yeah, Brilliant. really nice guy. Yeah. I was speaking at this event, and this guy comes up to me. And he says, hi, you probably don't know me. You probably don't remember me. My name is Jeff Haas. I was the first person to buy your course, and here it is. Wow. He brought it? That's he amazing. It. This was years. This was years and years. I, by the way, I had stopped. I actually sold that magic marketing business. I sold my info business. Um, and, yeah, and so I... And I wanted to buy it back from him because this thing was, this was the fir very first iteration That's of it. That's amazing. There's no way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, really cool. So that was that was the next big breakthrough. And then uh, I started, I attended a lot of uh, the, the, the Kennedy events. And Dan spoke about me a lot on the stage, wrote, wrote about me in the newsletter. I was one of his top students. And then people started coming to me, smart people who said, well, it doesn't matter what, if he was a magician or whatever, he knows marketing, he knows copywriting. Right. And the next big breakthrough I had was at an event. I had a, my first big private client hire me. Um, her name was Alexis. And you know Alexis. Yep. Actually, yeah. Yep. You, you actually, she mentioned yeah. you. Alexis, yeah. Alexis, I met her at an info summit, a GKIC info okay. summit, which is a gathering of information marketers. And She was raving uh, about she you. Hired, she, yeah. she paid me $40,000, which was, you know, a, a big chunk of change. I never had a. I had private clients, but never had to pay me forty thousand. And that's when I said, "Hey, this is a pretty good gig." And uh, so I, then I started doing consulting and a lot of done for you services um, for people, mostly creating sales presentations and writing copy um, for them. So when you take on someone like that, what do you? Where do you start? Because that, I mean, obviously it's a big chunk of change, but you have pride in what you do, and it's some pressure to produce sure. results. What do you? What do you do for them? Where do you start? Sure. Yeah, so we're kind of getting into outside of copywriting, but really copywriting is selling, is what it is, right? It's it's selling, right? Give me give me somebody who's a door-to-door -door salesman, and I can teach them how to write copy. Give me someone who's an academic and writes, who's a journalist, I'm gonna have a really tough time. Mm -hmm. right? So the first thing, and in, in whether you're when you're trying to get big clients, is to not try to get big clients. So by that, I mean, you've got to reverse the entire process, like I said earlier, so they're selling you. So my process was people have to qualify to work with me. Right. So I, I, if you want, I'll give you my procedure for how yeah. I sell 20000 to $40,000 done for you packages. All right? Amen. So, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, here's precisely how I did it. So the first done for you stuff I started doing, what I did for Alexis, was a teleseminar. Teleseminars that sell stuff. All right, I'm really good at selling. By the way, I'm only good at a very narrow area of things, right? Outside of those areas, my, my wife calls me an idiot savant. <laughs> Outside of that area, I'm an I, I'm an idiot. All right, I, honestly, I mean, you try to get me to hang a picture, it's going to be a disaster. All right, I'm really good at marketing and copywriting and selling, and that's about it. Well, that's a strength in knowing that you know. Yeah, well, yeah. there is a strength. Yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding. By the way, so this is not bragging. This is I'm good at this, and then outside of that, I'm not. So I was doing done for you teleseminars, and I still do them for GKIC. I mean, that's how we sell a lot of stuff yeah. for teleseminars and webinars. And so my process was this: I would do a teleseminar, and I would explain. I would get people on the call, you know, hundreds of people, and I would explain to them the exact process, telling them precisely what they need to do. And it's not a simple process. All right, now this is advanced because I you you say, but well, wait a minute, Dave. Just earlier you told me to tell people what to do, not how to do it, but now you're telling them to tell them the entire process. Okay, here's some sophistication. If your process is easy, 
you tell them what to do, not how to do it. If your process, in most cases, is complicated, I see. then telling them precisely what to do is exactly what you want to do because they're like, I, I don't want to do this. this. Yeah, exactly. So I would tell, so if somebody listened to that call, I mean, I could have sold the training, right? I could have sold it, like, but I wasn't into, I wasn't selling training. I was selling services. Yeah. I was selling, I'm going to do it for you services. So tell them exactly what to do. And at the end, I would simply say, okay, now I know I've just given you everything. I know some of you are thinking right now, I don't want to do this. I want, how can I get you to do it? Then I would go and I would explain how it works, that there was an application process because I only take two people a month, which was true. I only can take on two new clients a month and you've got to qualify to work with me. So then I would send them to an application, online application to fill it out. Well, guess what questions I asked them? Online what application. you awake at night, so staring at the ceiling and able to fall asleep as they're like, okay, what do you secret? I would just ask them. What do you secretly, privately desire most about this thing you want to do? Okay. Finish this sentence. If I could just blank, why haven't you completed this yourself by now? Right. And then I would tell them that they're going to get one of two emails. One email is saying, oh, congratulations. I think we could possibly work together. The other email is, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm the right person to work with you. So now they're filling out this application and now they're waiting for the email. This is totally different selling than anybody else is, is doing, right? Yeah. I'm not even selling them, right? And so, by the way, I did reject some people who I didn't think I could help. So then they would get an email saying, congratulations, Dave, looked over your thing, and or I looked over your thing, and you're going to be getting a call from my executive assistant. My executive assistant is going to call you one time to set up an appointment. If she, She'll leave a message, but you need to call her back within 24 hours. If you don't call her back within 24 hours... That's it, because I've got a whole bunch of people, right? So that got me away from people playing the telephone tag thing. So yeah. my executive assistant, Michelle Foster, would call them, and she would say, hey, congratulations, Mr. D. Now, everyone called, I don't like Mr., but it was not a specific purpose in this, okay? Mr. D read over your application. You got an email from him. We want to set up a call. So we'd set up the call, and she would say, okay, so your call is at this time at this day, and she'd say, hey, listen, a couple things. And she would act like, she was giving them some inside information. All of this was scripted. All this was copywriting. It's all scripted. Right. She would say, first of all, he doesn't like small talk. All right. So <laughs> he wants to get right down to business. Right. right. Second, don't call late. Even if you're a, if you're a minute late, he's not going to do it. Okay. So make sure you got the time right. And then she would send them a reminder. So now the person is freaking nervous, right? I've changed the whole position. So by the time they get on the call with me. First of all, I'm a lot nicer than she made me out to be, right? But here's the beauty. If I have in front of me how to sell them, <laughs> they told, they told me how to yeah. sell them. Yeah. It's all there. And so I would go through it. I would say, okay, 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 Jeremy. So I see here that uh, you want to do this. And one of the reasons you haven't done it and you're, you're afraid of this happening. Is that right? And yes, 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 yes. Okay, here's the plan that I... And basically, I would go over the same plan that I went on the teleseminar, but I would personalize it to them. At the end of the call, I never even closed, asked for the sale. They would say, well, how can I work with you? How can I work with you? And by the way, they would know the price before they got on the phone call with me because I didn't want to waste my time with people who couldn't afford the $20,000 to $40,000 fee. Right. And I would say, well, listen, I got a whole bunch. Now, you would think I would close the sale now. No. I said, I got a whole bunch of other calls coming in. I mean, I think you look good, uh, but I got it, I, you know, out of integrity, I've got to take these other calls. I'll send you an email if, 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 if it's a go, and I'll send you an email if it's not a go. And if it's a go, there'll be an a, a agreement attached. You got to fill that out. You got to get it back to me right away. And, and so now people would be like, I, I, I changed the positioning from me selling them to them selling me. Right. And there were people who, the process is so powerful. If you follow this process, if you're selling, it's by the powerful. Way, I'm copy. smiling because it's like so. Yeah, I get it's so powerful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a copywriter, this is how you sell copywriting services. All right. Um, one of the ways you can sell copywriting services, and so uh, it's so powerful though that it you have to be in total integrity. So there were people who I, like had horrible ideas. When I got on the phone, they were just it was not going to work. Right. Wasn't. And I'd have to say to them, 
you know, I wouldn't say, God, you're a doofus and your thing isn't going to work here. It's horrible. I just say, I know, you know, no, Mary, I just don't think that this is going to be the thing. I'm the, I'm the person to help you with this. I don't think I can help you with this. So taking it on me. And I remember this one woman, it happened more than once, but I remember this one woman in particular, and she's saying, no, 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 you don't understand. I have the $20,000. Money's not an issue. And I said, yeah, I know, Mary, I just don't think I'm the, no, no, you don't understand. So I have the money. I want to work with you. So she's literally begging to give me $20,000. And I still said no. And I, she sent me this, this email, which was like ripping me, right? That's how powerful the process is. Okay, because you, you change the whole position. So you want right. to think of yourself like um, an infomercial company. So if I'm Gunthy Ranker, right, people are coming to pitch me on their ideas. That's that's the position that I want to. So that's how the whole yeah. sell of that went, what happened. That's amazing. Like, yeah. Dave, thanks for sharing that. I sure. love that. So what were some of the secret private desires that you heard that maybe you didn't expect? Any that you remember? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recall... Um, or you what, know, or some what, of the for people yeah. who wanted to be information marketers, um, uh, it was the recognition, the, the 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 guru status. Now they wouldn't say it like that, but the recognition, the the quote, as you know, Dan Kennedy talks about being a a a, a, a famous, not famous guy, right? So he can walk through the airport, nods of people mobbing him like Brad Pitt, because Kennedy and Brad Pitt. Kind of look alike, <laughs> um, right? Uh, you know, right? So Kenny's a um, a lot of people wanted that, and they wouldn't verbalize that they wanted to have this. They want to be known. Power. They wanted yeah. to be known. Yeah. Right. They wanted to be validated. Yeah. I think that's a really good one. They wanted to be validated. Yeah. And we all want to be validated, right? Yeah. But someone who wants to become a guru and sell information products, in most cases, really wants that. Yeah. Yeah. So then how did you get to what eventually brought you to GKIC running the, the marketing? Yeah, that's that's really because this was a really difficult decision for me. Um, uh, I was doing very well with my own business. And what happened was uh, Bill. So Dan Kennedy sold the business to Bill Glazer. Right. Bill Glazer then really built it up, did a great job. I mean, really built it up because Dan wanted to have an operation that he could run out of his house. That's what his goal was. Right. And that's what he wanted to do. He didn't want to have any employees and any of that. So Bill wanted to build it big. Not that Dan couldn't have built it big. He could have. He didn't want it. Right. Bill wanted to have employees and all of that thing and build it big. So Bill, Bill built it big specifically to sell it. And Bill sold the business to a private equity company and who really didn't know – anything about the business, really. I mean, didn't really understand. They thought that we were in the, you know, selling educational services like you would do to corporations. Really, that's where they were coming from. And so Dan said to them, you better get somebody, because Dan still is with the company. I mean, he's a consultant to the company. You His better name's get, on it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. you better, he's a founder, you better get somebody who knows what the heck that they're doing here. And the guy I recommend is this, this Dave guy. And so I was at another event, and um, uh, I, I talked to the president of the CEO of the company, and they interviewed me, and we talked, and um, they said, well, we want you to come on board. And I'm like, well, I, I still want to be able to do my own thing, right. like, but we really want you full time. I said, well, I'm not moving to Chicago. That's out. That's out. That's out. I said, I'm in, Chica I'm in Chicago, by the way. So, are, yeah. are you? Yeah. Yeah. I love Chicago. I just don't, my, my family is here. My kids are yeah. here. Yeah. I've got a beautiful home here. Yeah. So I'm not moving to Chicago. I agree uh, with you. If you're in somewhere warmer, don't come to Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Love Chicago. The best restaurant on the planet is in Chicago. Which one? Um, called Alinea. Oh, yeah. I've heard I've that. Alinea for, we can, the, the whole marketing lesson, let's get back to Alinea. Yeah. It's a whole. They should be like comping me like massive dinners to talk about them constantly. But anyway, so then what happened was um, I was like, no, I really want to do my own thing and I'm doing really well with my own business and I really don't want to do this. But one of the things was I was basically doing the same things that GKIC does just on a much smaller scale. Yeah. And one of the things I love is to make an impact. I really like helping people. I really that love That comes it. across from what you're – I, I do. When you're I mean, teaching, I, I mean, yeah. 
you know, yeah. what, what really hit me, Jeremy, was when I was my first magic seminar that I did. A, a magician came up to me literally with tears in his eyes, literally. And he was nervous to meet me. And that's kind of funny, but because it's me. Right. He, and he, with tears in his eyes, he says, I, I need to thank you. You changed my life. Yeah. I'm finally living my dream. And because I'm living my dream, I'm a better father. I'm a better husband. And I'm happier. Huh. The money from Can't that, get better than that $99 course has long been spent. But that, and I, and I said, well, you know what? This platform, the GKIC platform, as you mentioned, is the biggest and the baddest in, the, in, in this industry. And by baddest, I mean best. Good, I mean, yeah, best. yeah. yeah. And that was one of the deciding factors. And, and the fact is that I actually make a little bit less money little bit that I was doing on my own. However, bigger impact. Um, yeah, I, I make a bigger impact. I get to talk to more people and I don't have to run any of the day to day business things. So they basically leave me alone yeah. here in Atlanta. That's big. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I want to actually change my title to chief, uh, chief, uh, entrepreneur, chief GKIC entrepreneur. Cause that's really what I am. I'm, not, I'm an entrepreneur inside yeah. GKIC business cause I work from home and, um, I, they've made it so I said, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not doing any reports. I'm not doing any of that corporate stuff. Right. Uh, first of all, I'm not good at it. You don't want me doing it. And so they want typos yeah, then ask for yeah, it. They, yeah. yeah. You don't want me to doing any of that. I'll come to the board meetings, but you don't want me to present anything. I mean, other than give my advice and, and things like that. Right. And so th that's what I do. So remember that little narrow area that I said, I'm good at. Yeah. That's what I do for GKIC. And, uh, it's, it's been working out fairly well yeah so tell me about so you run the marketing there tell me about some yeah. of the successful campaigns some impactful campaigns that were put together uh and why they worked yeah um i'll give you a a, a, a new it's not new because i actually did it when i was doing it for magicians but it's kind of new to the market which is something that i call done with you all right done with you programs not done so, for you done with you Right, done yeah. with you. So there's a lot of businesses, and it's a great business. Well, it's a great money-making business, the done-for-you business. So a lot of people just want things done for them. That's not the model that GKIC has set up. We don't do have a done-for-you. It's a completely different business. All right? mm -hmm. Now, you can make a lot of money with it, but ton of pressure. Ton of pressure because now you're responsible for results, yeah. right? Yeah. So what I created was um, – this thing called, and we've sold a, a number of iterations of it. The most recent one is called the Ultimate Marketing Machine. And it's an eight-week interactive program, all right, where it has, here are the keys to it. It's a fixed-term program, okay? So it's eight weeks, okay, with very specific outcomes. Not fluff, specific outcomes. At the end, you're going to have your shock and awe box created. Inside that shock and awe box is going to be your own book. There's going to be a CD. There's going to be this. There's going to be this. You're going to have your complete lead generation campaign done, online, offline, website set up, all right? And we're going to do it with you. We're going to give you all the templates. We're going to give you all that stuff. I'm going to lead, I'm the guy that's going to lead you through how to do all of this, all right? But you got to do it, right. okay? And that has just been a, uh, a grand slam. I, I mean, a grand, grand slam uh, for us. So that's one thing. And again, it's very easy to do because the beauty of it is you don't really need to create the whole thing before you deliver it because you're delivering it in modules, right? So we have maybe like the first, we know what we're going to teach, but we have maybe like the first three modules done and then they're created as we go along. So you also want to make a gear it towards the people if they're wanting something. You probably, again, if you create it all at once, then there's less probably room to change it or kind of specialize it to the, the people or what they're wanting. Mm -hmm. But at this point, yeah. you probably have it down to a science. You know. Yeah, we have it down to a science. So we've created, it was 90-day business transformation. So the first time we did that, we did an hour and a half uh, webcast. And I think we sold, for the first time, uh, $225,000 of it in wow. a very short period of time. The other big thing that um, we're doing and that um, – that I create for the company is uh, we talked about this before I create most of the marketing for the company and the ideas and the products that we're going to sell and all that is something that we call micro launches. Okay. And micro launches are really interesting and we've been very successful uh, with this. The micro launch is a four hour to five hour live internet broadcast where you are literally creating the product 
in front of people. So people can watch, tune in. If they tune in for five, it is the product. Okay? So you're like, well, how do you make any money doing that? If people can watch the creation of the product and take notes on the whole thing, who's going to buy it? Okay. Well, first of all, that's a mistake anyway, to, to think that just because you've given out the information that people don't want to buy it. Now, there's no replays of it. You can't watch it again, right? right? And how many people are going to sit down and watch five hours or something? Right. Right. Right? Yeah. So it is a real training. This is the key. It's not a sales presentation. It's a real training. So it's like 50 minutes. The way I structure these, typically it's four 50-minute segments. Yeah. There's a 10-minute break. At the 10-minute break, a video sales letter plays, selling the entire thing. Okay? So if you want to get all of this on DVD, and here's the key, they can watch the entire training, but what they don't get are all the samples and examples and copyright free marketing documents that we're showing, we show them. But if you want to get all of those, you got to buy the package. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. And plus, we add an additional bonus. You show them how to do it, and some of the tools are not. I mean, you're not showing the exact. Yeah, we will we'll show them the tool, oh, you but you kind of, you kind of need it. So, really cool story, which kind of brings this thing full circle. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm having a great time with you. Awesome. Um, um is uh, earlier this year, and I don't know when this is being broadcast, but earlier this year, um, we decided to redo magnetic marketing. Because, you know, there have been updates to it, but they've been mostly cosmetic. We really wanted to redo it because there's so many different things. Right. We wanted new examples, fresh examples. We wanted to put some internet stuff in there because in Dan's original, it was just all direct mail. And so we decided to do it as a micro launch. And so 18 years ago, I was sitting in an audience with no money, deep in debt, watching this guy, Dan Kennedy, talk about this magnetic marketing thing, which yeah. changed my life. It's amazing, yeah. Fast forward 18 years later, I now, Dan and I, actually recreated magnetic marketing together. Wow. I mean, how cool. I it's mean, it's amazing. I, just awesome for me, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, so these micro launches have been highly successful for us because you get paid to create the product. Also, you're giving out real training to people. Right. Not disguise training, not a sales, but real training. And so those have been crazy, uh, crazy successful for us. So the the done with you programs and the micro launches yeah. are really great. I taught it to one of my platinum members. Um, so we've got different groups at, at GKIC. Platinum is information marketing people who are information marketers. And he wanted to create his first product. He did this, and uh, he did over a hundred thousand wow. dollars. I think one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales. By following this process, he didn't have the product. He created the product, let people watch it, create it, and sold it while he was creating it. That's amazing. So, yeah. Dave, with the revamp of the magnetic marketing, what did you find? What What do you remember that you included when you revamped it? That is is going to be powerful. That wasn't an old version. We went in a lot deeper. I keep using the word deeper. And, and I, not, and I, I think that marketers and copywriters need to do this. They don't dig deep enough. So we went. We actually didn't change a lot of the teaching because the core teaching remains the same. But we went yeah. a lot deeper into each one of the subjects. Like examples. You mean? Yeah, and the examples. And we um, again, we included. Okay, well, because the big objection with magnetic marketing when we were selling it before we updated is, well, there's nothing about the internet. And our point was, well, yeah, but it the applies. principles are exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah. And so what we did is, for example, we would say, okay, here's a sales you letter. You put the word internet. No. <laughs> yeah, a copyright-free sales like, letter. Yeah. All right, well, here's how you take that copyright-free sales letter and make it into a web page. Here's how you take this display ad and you make it into a banner ad. Here's right. how you make it into a, a Facebook ad. So there was a lot of, a, a lot of stuff like that. I, I believe that, in fact, I know that the new magnetic marketing is far superior to the original, yeah. uh, uh, in in its production values and everything like that. But at, at the core, it's fundamentally the same. Now, here's a really important marketing lesson when it comes to magnetic marketing. Magnetic marketing is broken apart into different categories. So the main core of magnetic marketing is the toolkit, which are copyright-free marketing documents that Dan wrote and other people wrote, that, people, that I wrote, that Dan wrote, that people can basically fill in the blank and use. And we have it broken apart by industry category. So we have professional services providers, we have doctors, we have so on and so forth, right? right? Business to business. 
now to your to your to people who are watching this to your viewers why do you think we've done that we've already given you that. why do you think we've done that well we've done that because most people think my business is different right, right? and by the way Dave, when people watch your videos on YouTube or wherever you do an amazing job of this you don't go your prospect you you list off five different things you go if you're talking to your clients your patients your and you do that when you're talking because yeah. you're talking to every single person in there. But anyways. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that's exactly right, which, which brings up another point. I don't say I, – I try not to say – now, if somebody goes through everything I do, they're going to say, well, look at he did it there. Um, I try to act like I'm talking to one person, and that's a huge copywriting strategy. Whether, whether you're writing emails or whether you're writing sales letters, remember, you got to picture that person. Way back like an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, we talked about – creating who this person is, really getting into who they are. Well, when you write your copy, you're writing to that one person. You're never writing to a group right. of people, ever. And I see that mistake a yeah. lot. I mean, I'm talking copy. about you're on stage at GKIC and there's a lot of marketers there because when yeah. I hear patient or client yeah. or whatever, you're absolutely. speaking to that one person. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. That goes to another thing in copywriting. You have to speak the right jargon, right? So there's insider language that you need to use mm -hmm. that show that you're an insider. So um, I was in the once I learned got the information marketing model down. I went into different markets. So I was in the golf market, and because that was a very lucrative market. Now I had a program called uh, Seven Minute Yoga for Golfers. Okay. Seven Minute Yoga for Golfers. Now um, I don't like golf. Okay, so I'm not a golfer. I'm with you. On uh, that, yeah. I'm not a certified yoga instructor. Now I do practice yoga on a daily basis. So, but I knew this was a good market. So I wrote um, uh, full page ads, uh, which went in Golf Illustrator right next to John Carlton stuff, like his one legged golfer stuff, which is pretty damn intimidating, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm killed with it. Killed with it. Um, so, uh, but I had to learn what the language was. So, for example, a golfer never uses the term sand trap. Are you a golfer? No. Okay. They don't use sand trap. They use bunker. Oh. So if you say sand trap, they know you're not one of them. I see. They know you're not one of them. So uh, a doctor doesn't call his customer, his patient a customer or a client. Right. He calls them a, a patient. Right. Right. So you're right. So you got to speak, if, which is one of the difficulties that we actually have at GKIC. We're not niched. We are to small business owners, right? Where that's our target market, which makes it a little bit more difficult to do the marketing because it's much more difficult to speak directly to that one person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Dave, a lot of these campaigns are successful. What was one that didn't work or didn't work as well and what you figured out? I've never had a campaign. <laughs> never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, one that didn't work uh, as well was one we just did. Um, and, and the product, it, it's a shame because the product is really good. And uh, we, we, did, we did a product on selling. And it was Dan Kennedy, me, and our sales manager, great sales manager, great sales guy, Nick Luisi at GKIC. Uh, Nick's one of the most brilliant sales guys and marketers on the planet. He has an entrepreneur, has his own business in addition to being the sales manager at GKIC. So we created this thing. It was right after we did the uh, info. It was right after we did the huge "Make Them Buy Now" launch. So that was a huge launch. That was probably my biggest success. Which one? Um, you want to get into that? What I did to because I think it was that. I'm going to change the story. Okay? Go ahead. Change. It's, it's your okay? it's your interview. You change whatever story you want. Okay. Let me let me finish with this, but then I'm going to show you one that was bombing and how we turned it around. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. So this this was right after this huge launch that we did, this Make Them Buy Now launch. We did something else. We tried to do a micro launch right after it, selling this sales product. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. Wow. Uh, number one, the technology didn't work. And so like for the first 10 minutes, we were going in and out, which is no good. Uh, secondly, the three-person format, which we had never done before. It's usually just Dan and me. Right, we brought in Nick. Now Nick is great, and he knows his stuff. But the three-person format, all everyone trying to get their point of view across, didn't work. So it was kind of like, you know, almost three guys talking about selling at a bar. That's what it came across as. All right. Um, but the one of the biggest things was people 
were still recovering from the Make Them Buy Now launch and didn't even know, is this still part of the Make Them Buy Now? It was, it was too confusing soon. Confusing for people. We try to squeeze in one too many things as one of the factors. So that, that did not work. Now, when I say bombed, we still made money. Right. I mean, it didn't like zero out or anything, but it was not anywhere Compared near to your close. expectations, yeah. Yeah, not close to, not even close to our expectations. So, but the Make Them Buy Now launch is really instructive. So, um, for people who don't know what the launch sequence typically is, you typically have three videos, which are training videos. You've got a fourth video, which is a sales video. All three videos lead up to the fourth video, and that's when people are supposed to start buying. So, you don't open the cart until the fourth video. So Dan and I recorded these semi-humorous and entertaining videos together, and people loved them. We were getting great comments. We had a whole bunch of people opting in. Affiliates were participating fully with this thing, and we are excited, right? We have more, more opt-ins, more comments. People are digging this, right? We open the cart, and we basically hear crickets. Hmm. That's now, scary. this is supposed to do millions of dollars. This is like one of our big promotions of the year. We, we like make almost no sales. This is not good. This is not good at all. Right. First of all, Dave is the guy that came up with the idea. <laughs> uh, Dave is the guy that came up with the videos and, and the scripts and all of that stuff. Now, what I did not come up with, though, is the follow-up campaign. I did not come up with that, all right? And like the, the follow-up, idea, follow-up campaign no. was to add in more uh, bonuses, which is a typical thing. You add in more bonuses. Yeah. It was not working. We did the live, what we call Day with Dan, which is four hours of Dan. And sales picked up a little bit, but this is supposed to be a huge day. It didn't work. So we are now in deep, deep trouble on this launch. All right. What are we going to do? The, e- the follow-up emails that our, our copywriters had written and the idea of the follow-up plan of adding on the bonuses was doing the zero. Was doing nothing. That's scary, yeah. Yeah, it is very scary. Okay. And everyone's in a panic. And typically, what happens is when they need to sell stuff, I mean, that's what I'm good at. And so I came up with the idea. First of all, I said we scrapped all of the the, the, the copy that was written, all right? And I wrote the emails. And what I decided to do was to do um, five new trainings in a six-day period. None of them are completed, Okay. So I wrote the emails for them. So we did five five trainings over a seven day period, or four trainings, something like that. A lot of trainings, like ninety minute trainings. Yes. All right. And I followed um, my very specific format that I use for selling, for platform selling, selling one to many, as I call my psychic sales, selling one to many thing. And um, we gave real training and really good emails, uh, and the whole thing exploded. It, wow. it totally turned around. But let me tell you the key. Yeah. Let me tell you the big piece that we were missing. Because it wasn't just the trainings. It was the positioning. So the Make Them Buy Now is, in essence, a copywriting course. Okay? That's what it is. Okay, But it's a, an advanced copywriting course. Okay, It's an advanced copywriting course. So, But we didn't want to call it a copywriting course because there's a bazillion people calling it a copywriting course. So we mm-hmm. talked about how you can write great sales messages, mm-hmm. marketing messages for mm-hmm. the web or whatever. Selling the results. Here's the, the rookie owner. mistake that mm-hmm. we made on this thing, okay? That I made on the thing because I missed this piece. The rookie mistake was, and this is the key to the whole thing, was talking about not only what the prospect's outcome was going to be, but what their transformation was going to be. They're two different things. Okay. Okay. Let me explain. Yeah. The outcome is you're going to get more customers. You're going to get more clients. There's going to be more money in the bank. Those are outcomes. Transformation goes deeper than outcome. Transformation is how your life, how you as a person are going to be changed because of the outcomes that you achieve. So we started, I changed every training was around, what do people want? They want to generate leads. That's what they want. Okay, they want their outcome is they want to generate leads and they want to convert those leads to sales. Right. So really it was about lead generation and conversion, traffic and conversion. Now the product, that's what the product, the product is really a copywriting product. But I changed it to, it's a traffic and conversion product, which it is because you've right. got to write good copy, whether you're doing it on video or audio or whatever, yeah. right? So that was 
the change. The product didn't change. The positioning of the product didn't change. Mm. I gave people what they wanted, and I talked about the transformation that these two outcomes would get to them. And I'll, I'll give you the transformation because I use it a lot on stage. And if you're selling anything about making money, writing copy for anybody, this is this is gold. I, I say it just like this. I say, imagine being able to be at your son's soccer game and actually be at your son's soccer game. Mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. really present enjoying the game, not thinking about your business, yeah. not worrying about making payroll, having your head right there. Imagine watching, going to your daughter's play and being able to enjoy the play and being able to be there as a father right. or as a mother and not worry about if you're going to be able to pay your rent, all of that, to have that freedom of mind. That's way different than I'm going to generate more leads and get more customers. Right. You see? Yeah. And so I, I, I'm getting excited, so I'm shaking. Get excited. Yeah, do it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I love this stuff. You know, I mean, I love this I stuff. could tell you wrote the sales letter to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so, because it's true, that's what it did for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't have to worry. Yeah. And so, that change of positioning, talking about outcomes and transformations and the specific outcomes that they wanted, changed the whole thing. We went from dead to surpassing what our goal was uh, for the launch. So that was it. That was it. I've never been more tired ever in my life, ever. <laughs> So I had to create the presentations, yeah. deliver the presentations, right. and then sell. Um, you so, probably hesitated to sell. I'm going to send these six emails. It's committing me to an hour and a half presentation for each of them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Dave, um, I have many more questions. I mean, several more questions. We are beyond the hour, so I could limit it to one, or okay. I can go a few more. It's completely up to you of what... Um, frame is. Let's go a couple more. Okay. Let's go a couple awesome. More. Like 10 more minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is just super valuable. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, let you off, uh, so to speak. But um, so since it's Inspired Insider, I want to hear, and you talked a little, you referenced a little bit, but you know, for someone who may be experiencing it now, um, what's been the lowest moment? What was the lowest moment? And then how you pushed forward mm. through it, through that tough time? Um, so there's, there's two lowest moments. Okay. Uh, the first is a business lowest moment and the second is a personal lowest moment. And the personal one was more difficult to push through than the business one. Mm. So, so the lowest moment was at the karate school, uh, when, uh, my wife at the time, Tracy, uh, was working two jobs. She was a school teacher, a special ed teacher, and she had to um, work at, uh, it still bothers me to this day, this is like 18 years, by the way, 19 years, but to this day, I still feel it. She had to, she was, after school, she went and was a cashier at Target because I was making no money. And when I say no money, I was making no money. I was losing money. I was living on credit cards. Uh, what helped me push through that? Why was, was that? Why does that still bother you today? What is it? What about it? Oh, because I mean, because the story is, in a year she had quit both of her jobs, and was a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why it still bothers me, but it still does. It still I can still because I I go back I guess method acting right. I go back and I put myself in that place. Um, and I think that's valuable to do if you've struggled because there's people, your customers or the people, if you're writing copy for someone, they're, they're, they're struggling. Right. You've got to be able to, to feel that. So what helped me persevere through that was I was always into, I was always a positive thinker. I was always constantly studying uh, the Jim Rohn thing, Take Charge of Your Life, the program Take Charge right. of Your Life. That's the first program I listened to from Mr. Rohn. Just the title. Just the title was amazing right yeah and um, I remember him talking about in, in that program he talks about how his mentor he had a mentor Mr. Shelf and when he was a young man he went to Mr. Shelf with his list of reasons literally a list of reasons why he wasn't successful why he wasn't doing better you know my parents aren't supporting uh, aren't supportive of me the government taxes too much my job doesn't pay enough and Mr. Shelf took his list looked it over he said Mr. Rohn this is a fine list 
this is a fine list. There's only one, one problem with your list. You ain't on it, right? You're not on the list of the reasons why you're not doing well. Right. And so listening to that going, um, I, you know, I think. That's a tough part, pill to swallow though. Yeah. I think part of it is uh, luck or divine presence, whatever, going to that, going, getting that seminar, going, going to that seminar. I didn't go there to see Dan. Um, you know, Zig Ziglar was, you know, there's three people who have said that almost exact same story. Perry Marshall's one of them. He said, I just went to the success seminar. Dan was at the end of it. And then I became the Google ads, you know, it plays out. It's played out several times from talking to people. Yeah. And so the push through it was getting up the energy through this positive motivation and just doing something, forcing myself to do something. And really, that came down to desperation. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, you know, again, to quote Jim Rohn, he's got, he calls it the day that changes your life forever. The day where you finally say, it's enough. I, I'm not living like this any freaking more. Right. Okay. And so it really came down to desperation and a bit of anger for that one. Yeah. Um, the next lowest point was when I got divorced. Uh, wow. That was brutal. That was brutal for me. That was brutal for my business. Uh, and I remember doing um, four seminars. All of them lost money. All of them, because I just was not in the game. It was. It was. It was very. Mentally, very it's just so grueling. So grueling, financially grueling, and um, and. and but again, a lot of that is just so just time, right? It's just time. And so I went back to my roots. I listened to the Jim Rohn and the Tony Robbins mm-hmm. and Dan Kennedy. And I, I, I talked to friends who were supportive. I belong to a mastermind group outside of GKIC. All right. It's amazing. Perry Marshall is in it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, just brilliant, brilliant pot, you know, guys that I, I, that really helped me. Yeah. That really. That was one of the main things. If you don't belong to a mastermind group, you got to get into a mastermind group. And we've got some at GKIC, maybe yeah. you have one. Whatever it is, you yeah. got to get into a professionally run mastermind group, yeah. right? So, I mean, I pay for my mastermind group outside of GKIC to practice what I preach. Yeah. So that was, that was a huge one. And, you know, just then just getting, just doing it. Just, again, say, okay, listen, I got to take action. But the point is, I know that some people watching this right now are really struggling. Yeah. I know there's people that are doing great and life is great yeah. and all of that. But yeah. I can tell you, I've been there. Yeah. Right? I have absolutely been there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it can change and it can change fast for you. You've got to believe it and you've just got to start taking action. You've got to start implementing stuff. You've got to do stuff. And don't even worry if it works. Because not to get metaphysical, but when you put that out into the universe right right and you start doing stuff good stuff begins to happen to you yeah when you're huddled in the corner either metaphorically or huddled in the corner right literally nothing will happen for you yeah so um all the positive thinking in the world you need that but then you need that positive thinking to stir you to take action right. positive thinking on its own isn't going to manifest anything gary halbert uh said it great he said you accomplish a lot more with movement than you do with meditation. Right. Now, I'm a meditator, so I meditate, okay, yeah. and I'm positive thinking. I do all that kind of stuff. But you, the positive yeah. thinking purpose of it is yeah. to help you get through these tough times and motivate you to take action. Yeah. Those two are how I got from struggling to yeah. success. You know, Dave, I appreciate you sharing that because those are really tough, tough things that you yeah. know, have happened and talk about it. On the other side of things, what's been one of the proudest moments? My kids, nothing to do with business. Yeah, my children. Tell are me awesome. about that because that I can see you. You have five kids. That is. Yes, yeah, I've got. I've got two. I don't of even my know own. how you do that. That's the most impressive thing about this whole <laughs> interview. Forget about everything he just said. This yeah. is the most impressive thing, actually. Yeah, no, no, no question. My awesome kids. Yeah, way better. Way. How do my, you do my that? number one is a, is a is a daddy. Yeah, by far. That's my number one value. By far, more yeah. than making money, any of that. Um, so I've got I've got two of my own, Gina and David, and then I've got three stepkids. And uh, I just was recently married. There we go. There's there's the rate. Congratulations. Yeah, awesome woman. Um, so I got three more kids, and 
<laughs> this is a whole other topic. If we want to have another call, <laughs> we can about, about uh, I call it intention-based value setting as opposed to goal setting. What do you mean? And so I've got my journal right here. And uh, in my journal, I have what my, my greatest values are. Yeah. Uh, my definition of those. By the way, it's not, we're getting way off the track here. But there's, no, wanted, there's no track. The track is, yeah. Okay, I'm happy to do another one because this is yeah. this is big. Um, this is this is more than values. So when people say, well, "What what are your values?" Well, my values are honesty, integrity. Okay, that's not what I'm talking. About. I'm talking about what do you value? Yeah. What what is most important to you in your life? So I've got a list of my values here. So my children, being a great father, yeah. being an, a world class husband. I've got all of those things. Living a spiritual life, all of those things. Now, how do I define those things? So what is my definition of, of what that is, right? Yeah. Then the next phase is, okay, what are three things that I need to do, three fundamentals that I need to do on a consistent basis in order to actually live those values? Yeah. And I make sure that I create, then, then I create rituals around those things. Yeah. So that they happen automatically. So success becomes inevitable. I don't have to think about it. So for example, I've got a morning ritual. My morning ritual, we can go over it, but it consists yeah. of mental, spiritual, physical. So I, I get up, um, I uh, you know brush my teeth, all that stuff. I, I then do uh, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour of yoga, followed by meditation. I then have my, a protein shake and my vitamins and medicine and all that kind of stuff. Um, I then will then come to my journal and I write down my three most, imp first of all, I write down the very top of the page, what I'm most grateful for that day. Yeah. Something I'm grateful for. One thing. And I just don't write it down. I actually feel it. So I'm filling myself with grat filling my, with a feeling of gratitude. Um, I'm a Christian, so I end it with, you know, thank you, Lord, for all of my blessings. Yeah. I then write down uh, my MITs, my three most important tasks for the day. Three. Yeah. Three most important tasks. At least one of those has to relate to living my value. Yeah. Right? So... I, I can go look at my list. So, uh, hey, okay, I gotta have a, I gotta set up a date with my daughter. So it's just my daughter and me going out on a date. Yeah, and that's I love what. That. Yeah. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So one of those, at least one of those, every single day has to be one of my most important tasks. Yeah. Then I'm living my values. Yeah. And then I write miscellaneous. So here are a list of miscellaneous things that I need to accomplish. Yeah. I then go from this, and I'll tell you why. I'll give you a resource. It's called BulletJournal.com. Okay. BulletJournal.com. They don't sell anything. It's just their process of journaling. Yeah, I, I, I've adapted it, but I'm giving you the basics of it. Yeah, because by having it in a journal, you're recording your life. Yeah, you're recording your life as opposed to just having it on your Outlook calendar. I then take my most important tasks and I go to my Outlook calendar and I block off time for those most important tasks. Yeah, and I go to work on my most important task. And that's basically my it, morning. Th this is amazing, and if you're open to it, I'd love to. I want to respect this as a New Year's Eve day, and I want to respect yeah. your time. And I'd love to do a session on when Dave, you know, the day in the life of Dave D. Like yeah, waking I, up I, in the morning, to share this to I going to bed. Team yes, members, and it got a tremendous response. It's, it's different than goal setting. It's yeah, different than goal yeah. setting um, because a lot of goal setting it's action based. Yeah, there's things I can do because a lot of goal setting. The problem with it is there's things that are beyond your control. So you set an arbitrary goal of making a certain amount of money, which is fine if you do that, if it works for you. Right. But there are things that are beyond your control, right? And what if you do everything you possibly can do to maximize your income? And that's true. And you don't reach the goal. Well, you, if you did everything you, you possibly yeah. to maximize your income, you, there's nothing else you can do. Right. There's just some really cool studies. We'll, we'll do another call. Yeah. There's, some, there's, there's some really cool studies um, that – take the opposite approach of why goal setting does not work and why goal setting can actually be detrimental to your success. I don't buy it in completely, but it's all other topic. Yeah. And, and to go back to the proudest moment, what was one of those moments that you put in like that date with your daughter or with your son? What was one of those that sticks out to you as being, because you wrote it down, it happened. It was so amazing. Uh, hmm. Well, getting, well, paying off the eighty thousand dollars worth of debt in a year was pretty damn big. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, that that was huge. I mean, that that was huge. Uh, that was a, becoming a professional magician when I fully realized, hey, I did it. 
I did. I'm making a really good freaking living here doing sure. something I love that most people said I couldn't do. That was huge. Um, seeing my daughter uh, on stage. Yeah. Have the, having, the, having the guts to, as a little kid to go on stage and play the electric guitar and play a Ramon song. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate it. I mean, oh. I could. This could go on for hours, and I'm going to stop myself. Um, where should we point people towards? Where should they check out online? Yeah. You? So you want to go to a. If you're not a GKIC member, you definitely want to check it out at GKIC.com. Uh, we've got a a, a two month trial. Mm-hmm. We send you a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. But you get a two month free trial of our membership to see if you like it. If you don't like it, then you, you know you, you don't you don't continue. Yeah. But you know, it's me. It's Dan Kennedy. It's some of the, the the sharpest direct response marketers on the planet sure. who are training you. You get a newsletter, yeah. you get CDs, you get a whole bunch of tremendous benefits. You get to come to one of our, the live boot camp trainings for free. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of great benefits, so people should go check that out. And for me personally, um, if you're interested in selling, then DaveD.com. DaveD.com, yeah. And they should yeah. check out all your videos. I mean, they're phenomenal. Um, yeah. There's talks on YouTube, but DaveD.com and uh, the GKIC. Thank you, Dave. And I, I want to put a clip to one of your – I was looking for one of your magic shows online, and I couldn't <laughs> find one. Is there one online? No, not online. Nope. I want to clip it to the end of this. No, I don't, I don't, I don't have that. There's none. I, I, I don't even have it. The last – I haven't performed professionally in years. No, I mean I, just an old – I want to put like an old – I don't even have anything, dude. Damn. And if I did, it would be – dude, it would be on a, a VHS tape. I, I love – it's fine. I, I'll transcribe it. I'll get I'll it. I'll tell you what. Next time, here's what we'll do. Yeah. Check this out. Yeah. Next – here's what we're going to do. We'll tease them. Next time we come on and we do this, all right, I will, uh, I will influence the entire audience through – the computer screen okay we will do something live okay. on the computer screen okay i mean i'll literally read someone's mind or project thoughts into people's mind and we'll prove that yeah. it actually happened yeah because i'm i mean from a, a selfish standpoint i'm just i love the stuff and i was looking for it because i wanted to see you in action but um we'll they, do that next time honestly we'll do right. something live be cool happy new year thank you thank you so much my pleasure i had a great time Me thanks too. everybody bye